Oh, that always moves me so much. I love seeing that video. Welcome everyone to Golden Threads yearly event, What Do the Women Say? And we are here, Torenj Yerzarian and myself. Very happy to be here with you, Torenj. Um, this is an event that started in 1999, and it was originally called uh, From the Inside. It's always been a multimedia event with artists from all sorts of disciplines. And it's personally one of my favorite uh, Golden Thread traditions because of its intersectionality with artists from all over and uh, the voices it lifts. And I'm thrilled to be here with Taranj and uh, just have a conversation with her and then later to invite other fabulous artists, female artists that we've had over the years. And just to share with you all that um, as a company, over 70% of our artists have been female and we're very proud of that. So Taranj, I am just thrilled to be here with you. Um, and I just wanted to, I don't actually know where the origin of the idea was for you how it came about of, uh, women's well day. first let's say let me say hello to all of our uh audience out there across the world it's so nice to be on the digital realm because uh, people from around the world can be watching can be watching us um so we can be embarrassed globally uh, <laughs> and exactly. i do want to say happy international women's day um the we've uh, i mean we are obviously a woman founded company and from the very beginning golden thread has been working with uh, I, I would say mostly women artists so it, i think it was natural for us to celebrate international women's day uh, which is something that i think uh, like in the iranian community it's been celebrated every year across the world in various countries it's celebrated and less so, I think, maybe in the US. So we began with um, From the Inside, which was a co collaborative performance with visual artists, dancers, uh, theater um, actors. And that was in 1999. We had two performances of that in a studio in Oakland. And if we look at the image with all the different artists, it was very ritualistic. There was in the the space had two, two levels and down at the, on the first level, there was like a silicon factory installation that people, wow. that the audience could walk through. And then on the second floor was this performance space. And we had, we created sort of this ritualistic uh, space. Uh, there was, uh, there was dancing, there was, um, spoken word and uh, from there we just continued. Um, and I think I, we changed the name to what do the women say? I don't remember what year, but cause I've, I think I've kind of lost the records between uh, after 1999, the next women's day celebration that I have records for is 2005 um, and we, partnered with the She Company at that point, which was specifically focused on women theater artists. And for two or three years, we celebrated International Women's Day with the She Company. And that was really successful. Um, when did you begin your work with Golden Thread? Do you remember? Yes, I do. It was um, a reading of uh, Noah Sadawi play. And that was in 1998. I believe. Yeah, and, so even um, before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I love to look at this picture because like Sarah, Zahra Mahlouji's in there, your mama, your mom's there, Vida uh -huh. and Samin. And I, and remember, I like how we, we put the men behind the fence. <laughs> <laughs> right. We had three you know, male act or, or more. We had, I think, more because there are two fences and all the men are yeah. back there. Yeah, uh -huh. That was was that that was at the magic right yeah it was at the magic yeah. it was part of a festival the play was called 12 women in a cell so yeah this is ecstasy a water fable which i think was that, your next production yeah it was 2009 i believe and then there was reorient and this is 
this is why I always say I obviously need to do more comedies because almost every picture of me, looks, I look super sad. But that was um, a, the first monologue that Evren, yeah. And then uh-huh. from then on, I've just just been talking a lot on stage for too long. But that's <laughs> that's actually my kitchen, uh, right? Toronto yeah. did the yeah, majority we... of our rehearsal. And this is from our board retreats, which has been amazing. So I segued into being a board member in 2016. And then... Um, have become president which has been a challenge but good for me mm-hmm. and this is from one of my favorite events as well is our party at bob and judy's house our long-term supporters ex-board members and just overall amazing people who are incredible hosts yeah it's our yeah. appreciation event where we appreciate our artists volunteers and donors um one of the things that's interesting at golden thread is that you know people which is you know your case you began as an artist uh and then you kind of segued into serving as a board member like what was that transition like uh it it's been really a growth process for me because it's um because it's it's had me have to think about the the organization in a different way and how I want to show up and sort of the role of artists within nonprofit organizations and how important that role is, but also how much you learn about the nuts and bolts of of a company and what it takes to sustain something and help grow it and have part of the vision and the strategy to do so has been really amazing actually and it's it's um Actually, I think it's really instrumental because I think my time as a board member has grown as my child has grown. <laughs> For him, it's it's like something he knows. Oh, you have a board meeting. You're going to do this. We're going to talk. Say hi to Taranj. Who's going to be there? You know, and mm-hmm. I and that's something that has become very instrumental for me because it's 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 a form of activism actually to stay engaged in in this work and to serve this way. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the, uh, you know, one of the things I, that was important to me at Golden Thread and um, is is important to me. I can't use the past tense yet quite, um, is important to me is, um, you know, as women who come from the Middle East, uh, I don't know if what your experience was, what, but in my experience, um, you know, we have a really negative, or sad reputation in the US, you know, like we're victims and oppressed and unable to express our voices. And and that wasn't my experience in Iran. It wasn't my experience in my family. I come from a very matriarchal uh, family. You know, many women in my family uh, are professionals, artists, um, or other, you know, professions, you know, uh, my mother was a pioneering actor uh, in Iran. My, you know, great grandmother opened one of the first women's schools uh, in Iran at the turn of the century. So for me to come to the U.S. and then kind of be faced with this um, kind of ongoing uh, series of assumptions about uh, women in the Middle East being so oppressed and unable to express themselves, unable to engage with society. That was really annoying. <laughs> and, and so from the beginning at Golden Thread, I think we wanted to, to challenge uh, those stereotypes and really uh, center women artists in our work, which wasn't difficult because there were so many talented women in the Bay Area of Middle Eastern background who were doing incredible work. And um, so very quickly, we began to really build a community of women artists. So even though we're not exclusively, you know, a women's company, but like you said, you know, more than 70% of the artists that we have hired have been women in our in our 25 years. Well, I think something you said yesterday when we were talking was um, what's very important is that 
that you can see the sort of multiplicity of identities in what you do within this company, not only, not only of ethnic and uh, ethnic identities, but also in what you're capable of doing mm -hmm. as an artist, that you have a multiplicity of skills and all of those are welcomed at the company. And you, Taranch, have this very sneaky way of doing that for people. <laughs> because, <laughs> yes, this is what you do. You say, you'll say things to me like, so, um, I think you should facilitate these conversations. <laughs> and I say, I, I, you, you think so? I should? And there's this sort of this, 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 you see things in people that they may not be ready to see in themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and you allow that to grow. And you do it in that way where it's like, you don't actually give a lot of compliments, but you're like, no, you can do this. Just go out and do this. You can go just try. Mm -hmm. And that actually is a huge space of growth mm -hmm. for artists because we we need we need a variety of skill sets to stay in this field Absolutely. you know it's you, once you reach a certain point in your life you are you're an entrepreneur you're your own marketing person you, you have to have agility and I think is what I'm trying to say and when you have a leader who says it's, it's like parenting it's actually like good parenting it's like okay now with the time you tie your shoe you know and leave the house with your shoe you know it's it's a way of, of lifting voices on many levels. So you're not, you're not just pigeonholing yourself. And that's very important to me. It's, yeah. And it's an important, it's an important thing to continue to uphold because I, I have the exact same experience with you. And I, I grew up in Egypt and born in Libya, grew up in Egypt. I was just having this conversation with my parents the other day where, you know, in Egypt, there isn't um, inequality of pay scale, for example, that you have in the US. And I don't think people know that. There's not, you're not going to be offered a different salary than somebody else because you're a mm -hmm. woman. And I think of every, every female friend and person I know in Egypt is mm -hmm. doing their own thing. I don't know anyone sitting at home, not doing any, I mean, it's my image of what a woman is capable of is very vast. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when I moved to the U S to go to an all women's college, um, I was shocked by the questions I was asked consistently asked, you know, I mean, so many of us have had this experience where all of a sudden you become the representative sole voice for, you know, fill in the blank, all Middle Eastern women, but are women oppressed there? Do you have, are you able to fill in the blank? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it was not my experience. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I was actually, yeah. I was told, oh, you must be glad to be out of that oppression or oppressive environment. I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> you know, or yeah. you, it must be so nice to like find freedom here. And that's, you know, that's the narrative that is perpetuated in the media. Also, when you look at movies and, and plays, uh, that's what gets produced more. So that's, again, you know, Golden Thread's role is to challenge those narratives and develop our own, our own work, our own voices. Um, and, you know, like I come from a mixed family, uh, Christian, Muslim. I started out as a microbiologist. I worked in a corporation while I was running Golden Thread. Uh, so in terms of skill sets and the range of abilities that people have, you know, again, pigeonholing artists into this sort of characterization, oh, they don't, they don't know math, they don't know, you know, they can't handle reality or whatever. Like it's, it, it's really um, reductive. Um, and so from the beginning, again, Golden Thread, you know, with our umbrella definition of the Middle East and our insistence on welcoming everyone in their wholeness, you know, and encouraging them to expand that wholeness, you know, and giving them giving them tasks that you know, <laughs> forcing them to volunteer to do things that <laughs> that we need them to do, but but also helping them gain confidence in their own abilities and in all, in their own in their own skills. Yeah, that's absolutely imperative for the growth of a community as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, Taranj, I have a question for you. You have, um, you know, this year is so instrumental because it's the company's 25th year. Um, and 
when you when you think of the next 25 years for the company and what you would love to leave as a legacy can you speak to that a little bit what what is your what's your hope and dream for for golden thread as a company um i mean <laughs> i think i guess my my hope is um more of what we've been talking about, which is, you know, a really thriving artistic community that claim our own stories. Um, an artistic community that doesn't compromise, that experiments, that um, impacts the artistic field, you know, with our unique perspectives and our unique aesthetics. Um, in organizationally, I would want to see Golden Thread really fulfill its potential for being, uh, for, you know, reaching a global audience, for impacting um, the field organizationally, you know, with our ideas about um, artists being at the center of how an organization is run, um, and respecting um, that flexibility, you know, for an artist to develop their career, grow their career while they're also doing other things, uh, non-artistic work um, at, Golden, at Golden Thread. Um, and, you know, we have this vision of uh, centering the margins, Right. right, not constantly defining ourselves through uh, a white mainstream, right? We accomplish this with co-productions with other, uh, other theater companies and other organizations like African American Shakespeare or Asian American Theater because, our, because we wanna center our stories. We wanna we want to again challenge this idea of uh, the white narrative being being the mainstream narrative, and also challenge ourselves to um, come up with new definitions that are our definitions and not what we've uh, received from the white, um, you know, dominant. Uh, narrative. So I, I, I'm, my hope for Golden Thread is to really um, expand and, um, and deepen and, and continue to challenge and work with other uh, networks of, of theaters of color and, and really center our narratives so that, you know, American theater reflects who we are and who uh, who the U.S. is today, which is very different from the way the U.S. looked in the 1950s yes. when regional theater movement happened. Yeah, it's an exciting time for that. Mm -hmm. So this year's um, theme, I, I, each year Women's Day has this theme of, has a theme, and this year is the Choose to Challenge. And I was thinking on that, you know, what what is it? What is it that I would choose to challenge Do you? I mean, what would you say to that question? What's your ch choose? What would you challenge? I, don't, I mean, we're challenging everything in many ways, right? We're challenging the role of women, definition of artists, um, what is expected of us women artists. Um, we're challenging dominant narratives of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, and we're challenging ourselves to be better, to be more rigorous, and to um, to be more creative, to to um, I don't know, develop new ways of doing things that we haven't thought about. Especially with work, you know, working in the digital realm. I think for me, that's been challenging. I've had to learn a lot. Um, so it's a continuous learning process. Yeah. Yeah, talk, yeah. I mean, this year, this time last year, I remember I was in Portland thinking I was about to open a show and and you had to make the choice. You made the preemptive choice to to cancel the Women's Day event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I Baba, mean, yeah. 
that was, I mean, partly because artists were calling and, and asking, are, is, is it gonna happen? Should we come? And then audiences were calling and canceling their tickets. So I think people were uncomfortable and, and we saw that and, and we respected that. So we had to cancel the event. But one of the things I wanted to say specifically about International Women's Day that we celebrate, you know, our event, What Do the Women Say, is the one event at Golden Thread that's multidisciplinary. So we feature not only theater artists, but musicians, dancers, singers, visual artists, film. And, and, and that's been really satisfying to see, to, to like gather in one evening and really yeah. showcase that talent. And, um, and then when, you know, at the end of the event, we always have a conversation with all the particip participating artists. And I love those conversations, right? Uh, yeah. Women find so much uh, in common or they ask each other uh, creative questions. And, and some, sometimes, you know, new collaborations and partnerships are developed from that. Yeah. That's, that's what I love most about it, which is a perfect segue into this next portion, because um, we'll transition now to, to talking to the artists. But before we bring everyone in, we have um, a little clip from Yasmin Diaz, who is a visual artist um, whose work I really adore, and a message from Yasmin. And she, at, she attended the Women's Day 2019. Yeah. Hello, my name is Yasmin Nasser Diaz and I'm an artist based in Los Angeles. And even though I'm in Los Angeles and not in the Bay Area, um, I very much value just knowing that Golden Thread exists and is this community and platform that has enabled people, uh, creatives to uh, come up with and develop and nurture stories and to be able to share them with, their, with the community. Um, that is not a small thing. And I'm so grateful to have been a part of uh, that celebration of International Women's Day several years ago. That event took place at a very pivotal moment in my life and went on to lead to uh, many other opportunities. It was really, really meaningful night, really incredible evening. And I'm so grateful to have been introduced to the other artists who shared the stage uh, with me. It was such a moving night. I'm sure they all have been. Um, and what I hope for Golden Thread's future uh, for the next 25 years is to continue and to thrive and expand. Um, as we continue to change, evolve, and expand our worlds, uh, so will our stories. And therefore, we will need opportunities and spaces to tell them, uh, to create them, create them, to share them, um, you know, we as people become more nuanced and, and so will uh, the stories that we tell. So thank you so much for all that you do, uh, all that you've done for our communities. And I hope you live a very long and expansive life. Bye. Wow, well, that was one of no, my It was favorites. so lovely to have her. Uh, Yasmin is of Yemeni. Uh, descent and um, I had been looking for a Yemeni artist for some time so I was really pleased when uh, I came across her website and learned about her work and her work is amazing um, yeah so Yasmin Diaz yeah yeah I encourage everyone to check out her website and to look at her bio and what she chooses to challenge which is very bold yeah that was I remember that evening so well because her her introduction was so moving and funny the collab you know just and there was such celebration there was this air that night of, of celebration because of again the nuance that she provided so now i'd love to welcome all our other five artists to enter our room and to join us and yay 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 this is my favorite part when the screen starts to populate like magic <laughs> ah we are all met. Thank you for, for being here with us today and taking the time. And it's just such a joy. I wish we were <clears throat> in a real room, but here we are. This is magic in and itself. And so what we'll do is we'll simply uh, first ask each one of you 
to just introduce yourselves, where your name, how you uh, identify yourself as an artist and where you are in the world. So if we could begin with Sarah, please. Hi everyone, Sara Razavi, you know, Sara Razavi. Uh, I'm based in uh, the Bay Area, live in Oakland now, and uh, with Golden Thread for, for many, many years and under many different hats. Uh, first came in as an educator to support uh, back then the seed idea of uh, an education program, but really how I got to know Golden Thread was as, as an actor and then was welcomed as a director. And then, uh, like you, Nora, was welcomed as a board member and served in that board capacity for about six years, part of which was as board president and all of it has been super fruitful and um, a great opportunity. Thank you. And Lana, if you could. Unmute myself first. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm uh, Lana Nasser. Uh, performing artist, writer, and uh, most recently focused on uh, uh, voice acting and narration. Uh, an eco-feminist beekeeper is how I, I spend the rest of my life. And um, I am currently in the Netherlands, in the south of the Netherlands in Limburg. And uh, I come from Jordan. And uh, Golden Thread was uh, the first entity that I came into contact with, with when I moved to the Bay Area from New York. And uh, I don't know if this comes now or later of, of our participation with uh, with the, the International Women's Day. We'll but, talk about it more in a little bit. But yeah, okay. we'll come back to it. I'll, yeah. yeah, thank you. So thank so you, Lana. And then if we could move on to Naima, please. Such an honor to be with everybody. Um, so I'm Naima. I'm a musician and composer and an actress with Golden Thread and... Um, uh, performer in different ways and I started working with Golden Thread I believe in 2013 or 14 and uh, oh and I remember before that I was like seeing Golden Thread as this like untouchable like no they wouldn't want me <laughs> and then I became a part of the family and so it's so it's such an honor to be a part of another what would the women say especially the 25th anniversary very 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 powerful Thank you, Naima. Sophia. Ha ha. <laughs> my, my screen froze for a second, right when you said Sophia. Hi. Um, I'm Sophia Ahmed. Um, I'm in Oakland, California, in the Bay Area. And uh, I've worked with Golden Thread as an actor starting in 2003. It boggles my mind that that is 18 years ago. Um, and I've not uh, formally taught, but I'm a teaching artist as well. So I've like been in meetings talking about forming the education um, program at Golden Thread as well. Um, and just like a huge fan of the company and everyone who's affiliated with it. And last but certainly not least, Sedef. Hi, <laughs> I'm Sedef Ejer. Uh, I was born in Istanbul and now I'm in Paris for three decades now. I live in Paris, France, and I write now in French. I started as an actress, uh, as a child actress in Istanbul with uh, these kitsch uh, Turkish movies. <laughs> and then I uh, uh, wrote uh, scripts, uh, plays, novels uh, in French because now I'm in French. And last year I had this incredible chance to see one of my plays I wrote in French. Uh, staged in uh, Golden Thread by Golden Thread by uh, translated by Evren, thanks to Torange, Erin, and all the wonderful team. It was a wonderful human and artistic experience, and I'm so grateful to be here tonight with you. Thank you so much. So. Um, now we'll segue into each one of, we'll have a little bit more time to talk to each person. And mostly what I'm positioning and wondering is what, <clears throat> how your relationship with Golden Thread helped your career and the impact it's had on it. 
So we'll have a chance with each person to talk and have a little exchange. So Sara, we'll come back to you. Right. How it's impacted my career? So like like many folks on uh, here and and watching, um, I came to the Bay Area, um, you know, thinking I was going to do one thing. I was doing a, 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 a program with a professor at UC Berkeley. I needed to make ends meet, so I was teaching theater to children. Um, that picture is of me doing the uh, monologue, Yusuf El Gindi's the, Mon the monologist suffers her monologue, which is probably one of the ones that uh, came best known for and, and think about a lot. And here as a director, uh, this picture. Uh, but it, with Golden Thread, I uh, found an in into the multiplicities of myself. Um, I'm a queer woman um, and of Iranian. Um, I was born in Iran but raised in Southern California. And I really kept those identities very, very separate for a very long time. I also kept my Farsi speaking and English speaking very separate. I didn't think those two worlds could come together and ideas that I could express in English could not be expressed in Farsi, um, particularly about gender and sexuality and desire and all of that. And to come across Golden Thread and uh, see a world where the multiplicities of uh, Middle Eastern identities can live together and you don't have to identify as any one thing uh, was mind blowing. And to then be honored to, uh, and I remember like Naima, you know, Golden Thread, I was doing every other theater company, but Golden Thread, <laughs> I was just like, I can't audition for them. I don't, I don't speak Farsi well enough. I don't know. Golden Thread was very intimidating at that time. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this time. Thread went through a phase where she shaved all of her head. Um, and so I would no, see no. her at these events, this presence and man, she, and she, she came up to me one time. She's like, why have you never auditioned for us? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then I ended up doing a show with my very dear friend, Evren, uh, and Darvag. Darvag, who's also based in the Bay Area, but is specifically focused on uh, Farsi language, uh, Persian language uh, uh, pieces, had done a show in English. So it was the first time that I felt like I could act and identify, you know, be part of that identity. And Toran saw that piece and again was like, you need to come and audition for Golden Thread. And so I did. And uh, I think my first foray was with a reorient. Uh, in fact, it was mainly reorient that I participated in year after year and did a wonderful piece with you, Nora, where we played two sisters uh, in a really cool, surreal piece. Um, yeah. Magical, magical piece. So anyway, it's been... Uh, but what was amazing about Golden Thread was that I could, and I expect we'll hear this from everybody in some way, explore different parts of my myself. Um, because my day job is actually now very different. I'm in finance. I'm in micro lending specifically to entrepreneurs. I play very much, uh, you know, a, a different role. But I look to the way Golden Thread has worked across boundaries, across communities, and what I've learned about being able to articulate what you mean to say. Um, and that translates across professions, across work. Um, and I'm just grateful that I get to have an avenue, not only to see amazing art, but to periodically participate in it as well. And to hear the word artist and my name still connected uh, mm. is just a, a pleasure and a treat that I um, am so grateful for that Golden Thread continues to offer. Mm. Yeah, Sara, you've, you've, you've hit so many different marks for the company. You know, you're still such a, you're, you're a person we lean on still in so many ways. It's, it's like we've grown up together. That's that's what's really moving too. There's a kind of familial aspect to this company, which it's not shy to do, you know. Yeah. And I know turning on the Zoom and seeing all the white hair sprinkled. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it was a time where, where there was more yeah. dark hair. Always yeah. great hair. <laughs> it's true. Sutta is known, for those of you who may not know this, for her amazing hair. Like you I, which is, like, which is a, like crazy to, in this company, to have that claim for real. It's like everybody has amazing hair. <laughs> Looking at the photos, I'm like, great hair, great hair, great hair. <laughs> that was actually, I think, one reorient read. We were around the table, and it was one of the times where, because uh, with reorient, when I started uh, a, 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 a process where the group would meet in July ahead of the October, November shows, because so much of reorient is about working new pieces. It's all about, you know, allowing the artists at every level to think very collaboratively. So they come together for this uh, uh, gathering, the summit in no let, and she's done this on purpose, July 4th weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Middle Easterners come together <laughs> in San Francisco. Uh, and uh, there are so many barbecues. I'm like, no, no, cannot. I, <laughs> I have to go to a golden thread retreat. But we, ca we came together and it was one of those such, uh, uh, times where we were sitting around reading a table and an artist who hadn't worked with Golden Thread before, I think she just looked around and she said, I'm just so excited that I found people similar hair and she had very, very curly full hair. Uh, and to uh, Evren or someone had mentioned to me and, and I agree, so many Middle Eastern kids don't grow into their features until much later in life. Your nose is always too big, your eyes are so much, your lips are so much, your hair. Uh, and so it was just lovely to have a community where you find familiarity, but also uh, can can position yourself as, as the individual that you are. Oh, it's so moving. Thank you, Sara. Lana, we'll move to you. I, 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 I heard about your piece. Uh, at Women's Day, and I still wish I had seen it, but I would love to hear about your, you know, your relationship with the company. We only have one picture because yeah, we that's... need more, but yeah, so please, your, your yeah. time. Uh, wow, that's good to see this picture, yes, that was, uh, um, okay, well, uh, as I said, I, uh, I met Taranj, uh and uh, through, uh, before even moving to, to San Francisco Bay Area, or rather Oakland, that I heard about Golden Thread. I was living in New York. And uh, as an actress in New York, coming to the, the Bay Area, I came to study master's in consciousness studies. So, uh, and I thought, oh, Golden Thread, Middle East, uh, met Durant right away. Um, I'm not sure what year that was, if it was 2004, 2003. And my participation was with uh, the What Do the Women Say several times. And uh, one of it was with a, a kind of a interpretive dance performance that I called Rope, if I believe correctly. And then uh, came another one that, that I called Is, IS. This is before IS became something. This had nothing to do with IS, but more with <laughs> Is being I, I am, she is, I is. And uh, last but not least was uh, Arab Woman Talking in which I, uh, which was the beginning for me with uh, Arab woman talking, like talking, so bringing in my actual uh, words to stage. I would say that before my performances with Golden Thread with uh, Women's Day, I was always an actress, but um, my participation with Golden Thread represents also my stepping into myself as a performing artist, as a maker also. Uh, and so it provided me a space to present my own work, uh, an experimental work, whether it was dance uh, or uh, monologue. Um, and uh, it was a, a, a safe and encouraging environment. Of course, Women's Day itself uh, was, was wonderful to celebrate. So, and then an uh, unexpected uh, development from that was that after I left the Bay Area and went back to Jordan, I started um, with, with a network uh, of, of artists, women artists that I uh, organized there, an International Women's Day Festival. Yeah. Um, went on for the four years that I was there and grew from a budget of like 5,000 euros to 50,000 euros right away. And uh, from being very local to being very international and um, quite successful in a short time. Which unfortunately didn't it didn't uh, stay uh, when I left Jordan and didn't continue unfortunately. But 
it was, uh, uh, well, four is four, five is a complete circle. So that's also okay, things come and go. So that kind of uh, sums up my experience, except, oh yeah, and I tried to volunteer also with Golden Thread, but, and then they wanted someone to do data entry. And I'm like the worst person with, with details. So thankfully, <laughs> uh, I lasted for like, I don't know, a couple of hours. Otherwise they would have lost all of their mailing list, all of it, because you know, <laughs> putting six, seven, eight, I would put six, eight, seven, little, little details, not big for phone numbers or address. So that, but, that, but Lana, you were a great bartender. <laughs> you, you bartended our our spring uh, art auction, I think one year or two years, and and you were one of our most popular bartenders, I must say. Excellent. Well, at least I'm good at something. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and I think what's really great is like what what you both talked about at the bit at the beginning is that kind of breaking this stereotype of what uh, a Middle Eastern woman is, and kind of this repressed uh, doesn't talk. And I mean, look at all of you, uh, and um, <laughs> it's just so not true. And I think that's what I love about Golden Thread is not just for the women, even though women seem to be really at the, the full forefront, but breaking these uh, stereotypes. And I think that's just so important. And that's that's what I hope to continue seeing in the in the future of, of the company. Thank you, Lana. It's very moving. And I want to see, I wish we had footage of your piece. I would have loved to see Me that. Me too. I lost all my footage with an external hard drive that decided to uh, uh, go on to retirement earlier than planned. So uh, I'll have to, you can imagine, it was amazing. I'll tell you this. I, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I know it. Thank you so much. Naima, we'll move on to you. I, um, yeah. So lovely to be here with you. I so admire your work. So, yeah. Um, so good to be here with you all. Um, uh, I was just thinking of the fifth string. This was like the, uh, it makes me emotional because I think that I had forgotten prior to me working with Golden Thread, I kind of compartmentalized this part of me that was also a theater person, an actress, as a young person, like I, I loved musical theater. And somehow, you know, as an Arab, um, American, and we're all speaking to this, these ways that we so we get put in boxes and we just get ha assumptions thrown at us. And, and then so trying to find my way as a as a musician and as a singer, you know, all these the the, the pressure to choose genre and all this just ridiculous stuff that it, it does not allow for us to be the dynamic beings that we are, however we want to be it, just like anybody else. And so I remember Fada uh, came to a few of my performances and she was like, you know, you have to, you have to audition for Golden Thread. You have to audition for Golden Thread. And then that was the moment where I was like, no, you know, Golden Thread is this, you know, theater company out there. Like I, I've been away from theater for so long, but um, I was able to get an audition and um, Immediately, I mean, I I'll, I won't ever forget the audition I had with Majd and Toranji were there and we were like, I don't know, you, you gave me a, a script and I had to just like improvise and there was singing and there was acting and I was so nervous because I hadn't seen myself as an actor for so long. Um, so anyway, I, I, I received the role and it was like the most incredible motley crew of a cast. We had way too much fun like on stage, off stage, and you had to get, you just put in, put in line a lot, but it was like, oh my gosh, like this is my Middle Eastern family. Like I can be up, I can be down, I can be all the things. I can be the musician who like just wants to sing blues in English. I could be the musician who sings in my terrible Arabic accent because my Arabic sucks and I'm trying to work on it. But like, you know, and there was space for that. And, and Toranj, I'll, I'll remember when, I was throwing around ideas of, you know, writing my own, my, writing my own script. And I haven't done that yet, but you were just so supportive and you were like, you know, come, come to my house. <laughs> I'm going to work with you. Like you really laid out so much opportunities for me to grow into myself, not just as an actress or a musician. Oh my, I'm going to cry like as all of it, you know what I mean? And 
And being an Arab woman in the U.S., it's like you they don't even know. They don't even know how dynamic we are. Like my family is so like loud and boisterous and 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 I learned imp- even though no one was a professional artist, like I learned improvisation from them. I learned expression. I learned acting from them without realizing it was that. And so through Golden Thread, I feel like I was so supported to be um uh like I just pulled out those seeds. Like what is it? Khalil Gibran says, um, knowledge is not what is given, but like water is the seeds within us. Like I feel like that's what Golden Thread does. I feel like Golden Thread, like water is that is what is in us and 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 really nurtures it and gives it that space and container to 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 thrive and be a fertile flower in the orchard. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. So yeah. I could say I could go on and on. Thank you, Naima. That's so, I mean, I remember um, your performance at our 20th year anniversary and just sort of the, 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 the full energy you had there and what oh. you brought to the house was really warm. It's, um, mm-hmm. And we forget as artists that, that we're, we're, we forget that we can be really, co- you feel really confident in one zone and then get more shy in another. Absolutely. And, oh, right? story of so my just, life. Shy right, so, and bold somehow at the same time. I don't understand, but both. All of it. That's the way it is. We all, we all struggle yep. with that, I think. Most but it's, artists it's to, feel, yeah. To be, to, be, to be seen in that way is, yeah. is really um, what helps you lift that, right? Yes, so thank absolutely. You. Thank yeah. you for your forthrightness and vulnerability. Oh, so, no, thank so you. lovely. Thank you, so thank you. So lovely, yeah. Oh, Sophia, I move to you, my dear friend. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah. Yeah, I I was thinking about this question, like how has Golden Thread been a part of my career? And I I mean, it it charts my Golden Thread kind of is like the cradle for my entire career, really, in the Bay Area, um, which is my entire acting career. So this that was oh, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> but I I moved back to the Bay Area. I was born and raised in San Francisco, and I moved back to the Bay Area. Um, in 2001 and did dangerous highway um and did um like a couple of community theater shows that was the show that we like we we ran into sheltering in place the last group of people i was with was that group of people celebrating our early closure and we all hugged each other and we're breathing on each other and we're like we're not gonna be able to do this for a month or two huh and then in a year um, but, uh, yeah, I, so I like did some community theater and then I did some children's theater and I realized I'm pretty positive Love Missile was the first show that I got paid to do like a primetime show, not for kids. And I was like, this is a big deal. Like I'm an actor. I'm getting paid to <laughs> be an actor on stage, not for fourth graders who are being forced <laughs> to come and watch this show um about like don't bully which that I mean I love children's theater but it was like a a primetime show and love missile is iconic like in my household with my friends I have a friend who says that was good but it was no love missile (laughs) it still says that because it was like it was a trip it was puppetry like shadow puppets and puppetry it was a musical there was dancing it was amazing. Um, and that was the first show that I got to do with um, Vida and not knowing her history because I'm a half Pakistani. So like I did not know about Iranian cinema at that point. Um, but she I, like I just remember adoring her, um, but not knowing like someone mentioned, oh, yeah, she was like a, a huge actress in Iran. I was like, what? <laughs> like, she was just so like lovely and, you know, um personable and sweet and she played my mom in that show and it was uh, awesome um and then like I've done a few women's women's day events what do the women say and I think that the only time I've ever played somebody Pakistani was in a what do the women say reading and I can't remember the name of the play but it was lovely it was a three woman remains was remains yeah oh that's what it was Sima Sueco Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And 
I loved that piece. It was just beautiful um, at Petrero stage. Um, and then just like, I mean, this is my career, this is my life. Like it just so happens that the last show I did before I had a child was Most Dangerous Highway in the world. And then the first show I did again after a two year hiatus was Reorient. And I remember like, you know, thinking about whether I could kind of arrange my life with this child also to do it. And, and Taranj was just like, we, you know, we will work with your schedule. Like it was so supportive of being a parent, um, being able to hold both sides um, of, of who I was now, who I am now. Um, and so that was, it was amazing to do Reorient because I was like, oh, this is scary. <laughs> For, like auditioning again after a few years was really nerve wracking, but it was coming into a room filled with like my family and it felt like coming back home. And I'm like, oh no, like I can do this in this space because these are people who are just wonderful and lovely and supportive. Um, and then the last show that I did before Shelter in Place, it's like, just it's kind of a career trajectory, but also just a life trajectory. Um, and also doing a reading with Golden Thread led to a show at the Magic with you, Nora, and with Atosa and with Bridget, which is kind of like the most wonderful and with Betty Shamia, the writer, and Jessica Hyde, like the most amazing septet that are sextet. Um, of of women, just powerhouse. And also where I met Evren because he was like a marketing director at the Magic at that time. So just, yeah, it's led to everything. So thank you, Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, clear impact. It's, it's so moving to hear, Sophia. And it's a, a great segue because yes, the last show right before everything shut down was The Death's Beautiful Play, which I We'll see one day, hopefully. So Def, I'm so happy you're here with us from Paris and your relationship with us is the most recent, of, but uh, but yes, just to hear your, the impact of working on that piece, yeah. I think you're muted, sorry. Sorry, a technical, yeah, I know. So, it's like the, our life story. Sorry, okay. Oh, no, thank you. Okay, so you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so it was an incredible experience for me. I will tell you why. The first time I came, oh, these images are so moving. Um, I was very surprised of uh, this community, you know, because in France, I always worked always, uh, of course, with my origins, Turkish origins, but I was kind of, erasing it. I mean, it was on my work, it was on my writing, but it was, you know, in France, it's very different. I mean, how you work with your origins and this is a, another um, integration politics and, uh, and there to see all these uh, Middle Eastern women and as uh, Toranj was saying, if there is this image of victim women and I, I was seeing all these proud women of, proud or not, I mean, uh, but uh, the origins were, were important for so many, uh, so many of, of these uh, people who were there, who were working together. So, and I think in the first time uh, when I came to work on the text, because uh, you were, uh, they were asking me questions about the text, uh, everyone was translating and was changing some words, so we were really working on commas and uh, very specific questions about my text, uh, and I think this work and to hear my uh, my text in English and all this atmosphere uh, opened a door in my mind and I was very happy I came back to Paris and we were writing to each other I knew that the rehearsal was we were going we were continuing and when I came the second time uh, I knew that I was looking for something there this time and it linked me completely to another work uh, on which I was working for four years. It was a novel in French, my first novel in French. And I was looking, I was searching for my childhood because uh, I was 
uh, working on this Turkish cinema with all these movies. This is the cover of the book, you know, with all these posters. And uh, I forgot all these movies. And little by little, like an archeological uh, excavation, it came and I was working on a, on a woman uh, who was, uh, uh, whose mother was a great actress in Turkey in the 70s. And I learned just that Toranj had, it was her life I was writing. And um, when I came back, I, uh, I had another rehearsal, but of course, because of the COVID, uh, my play was, the show was uh, closed in San Francisco. I was very sad, of course, but I said, okay, I can't do anything. And in San Francisco, it's closed, in France it's closed. I, I will try to uh, write this book finally, instead of putting, putting it in the trash. And uh, everything was uh, uh, coming in this, um, how do you say, confinement time, in this quarantine time. And I found something incredible because there is a bridge in Istanbul, the Bosphorus Bridge is kind of a replica of a golden gate. And all the thing, all my story came and uh, look, uh, my, I found my last chapter after I came back. Look, my epilogue is Golden Gate Bridge. So this is the end of the book. And my last character in the, in the uh, book is the Professor Toranj here. <laughs> and everything was uh, in place. And after four years of work, instead of putting on trash my book, I uh, finished it. But I was still not sure about this. And uh, I sent it to, the, to a publishing house, which was my first choice. And four days later, I had a contract saying it was a great novel. And uh, it just came out in uh, January 13. And every day I'm thank I thank Golden Thread for this book because it's a very personal book. It's a very very um, everybody was uh, as, is asking me if it is uh, a re really my life or it's a novel. You know, uh, it's my uh, most personal work, uh, and it's thanks to Golden Thread and all I worked. I lived there. Was it clear? Yes, so that's uh, not only clear, I mean, that's what you speak of is so, I think, um, I think most of us, we can, all of us can relate to that, the sort of segments of ourselves that we bury a little bit to carry mm -hmm. on and move forward. And we don't know what will, what will bring it up. And, and, and so this, that, 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 that opening happened for you because of this connection seems to me like a through line for all of us. And I'm very moved by that story. And I will buy the book. My French <laughs> has gotten very bad over the years, but I will, <laughs> I will work on it. So that's such a moving story. I didn't, I knew that you published a book, but I didn't realize that that was the impetus. And of, of course, with, yeah. It's completely linked to, to this experience, completely. Because I was really suffering uh, about writing this book for four years. But uh, this experience in Golden Thread put all the all the things together. You know, sometimes um, you work on a yeah. Some some of the projects are difficult, <laughs> and uh, this one was a very difficult one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you so much for these amazing stories. We're um, so lucky to share the space with you all and to have such an array. It feels like there's like really well orchestrated measure this timeline with everyone from origin to now and this evolution of us. Um, so now we're just, you know, here to answer questions and to continue the conversation and open it up to audience members. Um, okay, I have one here. Let me start. So the question is, what are your hopes for Golden Thread and its future? Maybe for the, yeah, let's just say for the future of the company. Um, I will take a person who raises their hand first. 
or you can think about it and then just unmute yourself. So um, there you go. I can, I can go first. I, I think like Sophia, um, I've also become a parent through the many years here with Golden Thread. I uh, have now a three-year-old daughter, uh, Amelia, uh, Emmy, and I hope that she finds a home in the future of Golden Thread. Uh, you know, I remember a board member a while back when fairy tale, uh, the fairy tale players were just starting out. She was so adamant about making sure her daughter found a place because even in the Bay Area, she said it's hard. Uh, and they had, they were a mixed family, uh, to find a place where she could uh, see herself. Uh, and so I hope uh, not only our kids, Sophia, mine, and many folks who've had kids, you too, Nora, uh, during your time with Golden Thread, uh, but just in general, that uh, we continue to create uh, a space for those who don't see themselves elsewhere to find themselves here. Um, and so Golden Thread to continue to do that. I'm gonna use a like farming analogy or, you know, I don't know why I keep going there, but I just see like, tw if you think like 25 years, like that, wow, like that establishes roots and that establishes groundwork. Um, and and so much more obviously in fruits and everything and a harvest but um i think what i what i would dream for golden thread is just continued continued abundance and prosperity and the support right and like just from all directions like an ease and a channel and a like rivers of just financial support uh all kind of pr support so that because what Golden Thread is in and of itself is already so supportive, right? And and of of artists. So just a matter of like having it, having the doors open in a way where it's just um, so full of resources and uh, human resources, monetary, like all the things, so that it's just continues to just support and uplift artists that we don't that I don't even know about yet. You know what I mean? So um, it's an overall dream, but that I'm, I'm gonna uh, piggyback on what Naima said because there's there's this um, for anyone who's not in theater there's this huge movement that's been going on uh, it's called we see you WAP we see you white American theater and it's like since the pandemic and theater is being shut down there's a huge discussion happening about making theater traditionally white led theater is more diverse and 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 then you know like concurrently just like yes making established theaters more diverse but also lifting up all of these theaters that have been diverse and golden thread is what we want to lift up <laughs> as american theater like it is so diverse it is so um gender inclusive and and equal very women-led so like yes having it be funded and supported at these levels where it is not at risk um of you know not being viable that it is like has kind of uh, a carriage and an endowment like huge theaters because it is everything that we want modern 21st century to be um <laughs> you're here i keep doing this this is my son's school if you agree with something you knock so if you see me doing this that's what this is so it's instead of everybody clapping we just knock someone honors somebody so that's what i'm doing um i'm going to move on to this next question because i find it moving and important and it's uh, what is your message to young bipoc women identifying artists trying to make it in the theater field in the U.S. Anybody want to take that big question? It's a good one. Can I, can I just say my message would be kick ass. <laughs> 
kick ass. And I, I think, can I I'll just add a little bit, which is also use all your nuance, you know, don't, don't, don't be afraid to, and find and find your safe spaces and people to work with that allow you to be like, yeah, you do that. You try that. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to do that. Yeah. Naima, I feel like that now everyone wants to say something. This is good. I love it. So go, go, I Sophia. Wanted, go, Sophia. Go, Sophia. Um, I want to say you are worthy and you have something to say. Um, I think that being at a, like, I love Shakespeare, but I went to like a very classical based actors training and it was kind of like so many men, so few, like, sorry, so many women, so few men for tiny amount of female parts. And like, you start to doubt yourself and your worth because you feel like you're replaceable. You feel like, you know, you can't rock the boat. You can't, um, stand up for what is right and and for you to be safe and you to be supported and know that you are worthy and that you have value to offer and don't let people make you feel like you are replaceable because you're not. Naima, go for it. Yeah. Oh, oh, Naima and Ned set up, please. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, just be all of it. Be all everything that you are. Let your identity spill over the boundaries, stupid boundaries that people write for you. Like pff, erase it, stomp on it. Be impossible. Do it. Like just be. And I know that takes some. Uh, that takes a lot of community support and inner work. But you got this. You don't have to ascribe to their identifications. You get to create your own. You get to create your own. I'm talking to my inner child right now. Say that, please. Yeah, I think um, writers are dangerous for the populisms. And among dangerous women, the most dangerous ones are the ones who tell stories. They are even more dangerous than active politicians because when they are telling stories with their experience, female experience, they shake the point of view. They change the stories told by men and they put the camera in the other way. Writing is the ultimate freedom because if you write with your imagination, you can go to all the forbidden spaces, all the dangerous places. You can be a man, you can be a prostitute, you can be an enemy. And that's why um, in the beginning of the first wave of feminism, these brilliant doctors, anatomists were uh, saying, they were proving that women who write had smaller uterus, they had fra fragile brain, uh, and uh, they would go hysterical, anemic, but women wrote anyway, and they decided to tell stories, and not only in the West, uh, everywhere women transgress the rules and um, making the stories uh, circulate, making them going across the borders uh, is very important. It's a political act because if we have narratives from uh, far territories, it makes people uh, less misogyn less homophobic, less, uh, I don't know, less stupid. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, the women has to write with their experience and uh, really we have to make these stories circulate uh, from countries to countries. I think this is the most important uh, experience we can uh, say to younger generations, younger women. And I think uh, little girls, we have to give them confidence because if they had 10th of the confidence of the young boys, uh, there would be equal uh, women, uh, female and men writers. So we are really working with, uh, in, with an association we uh, found here, uh, which is uh, women francophone writers. We are, um, hundreds uh, or I don't know, 80, 90 uh, women writer from five, uh, five continents. And uh, we are all Francophone. And uh, 
uh, we really want to try that to give to to encourage the uh, young generation women to write. I love it. That's going to get a serious knock like this. Yay. <laughs> Lana, you had something to say. Yeah, just real quick that uh, I think for, for um, uh, if you don't find roles that you can play, then create these roles. That's, that's, uh, that's it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I, I would also, uh, you know, for, for any young artist, it, I would encourage you to find someone you trust and, and keep them. Somebody who knows you, somebody who can see your work or read your work and give you feedback. It's one of the toughest things um, in, in theater for me has been not having uh, critics, you know, professional critics who understand our work or, um, see it for what it's trying to do or analyze it uh, aesthetically. You know, they often just focus on the social necessity or the benef social benefits of the work and not really take the artistic offering seriously. Um, and I think for an artist to grow, you really need to have somebody you trust that you can say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? How, how do you respond to, you know, what I'm trying to do here? Uh, so I think it's important to have one or two, like have a little community that you can trust. If not Golden Thread, then, <laughs> then you know, another somebody else. Yeah. And also, I think, sorry, one last thing, the translation is very important also to make the stories uh, uh, from one language to the other, from one country to the other. It's very important to, to create communities with translators and institutions which are, I mean, from Arabic to um, English to from French to English and all. I mean, it's very important, I think, to make a network of translator uh, and uh, writers together. Huge. Um, another question is, what are you working on now? Artistically or, or whatever, or uh, maybe artistically for this purpose. Whoever wants to take that. Yeah. I could go. Uh, so uh, for me, a lot of it since moving to the Netherlands, I've been writing. So I just, uh, I had just published my first uh, book, and it's a, um, a fable in Dutch, uh, which, uh, yeah, I never thought that my first book would actually be in Dutch. I mean, I've published before plays and uh, that kind of thing, but a book, yeah. So that that was my first, and I'm continuing with that. So. Uh, right now, I'm also uh, starting uh, uh, with. Uh, I'm continuing to write. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to decide if I'm going to make this next uh, book in Dutch or in English, because there's uh, always kind of uh, one, uh, uh, yeah, there's always uh, uh, pros and cons, uh, you can say. And, uh, and now, yeah, for me now, it's also work, and I guess with the corona time and all this stuff, is moving into the, um, uh, the audio booth. So moving from uh, uh, performing on stage to performing in the audio booth, which... Uh, you can't really see it. It's in the corner there. It's a bit dark with um, <laughs> working on narration, getting how to reach the world with my voice instead of also with my body. So that's kind of um, the biggest thing. And also, um, which my new focus, because for me has always been that way that uh, uh, women, emancipation, gender equality, these have been always very important. And to me, uh, now it's also moved in uh, uh, the environment and so nature. Uh, so now it's really with, with thinking of bringing back the balance between the feminine and the masculine in both humans, but also in our relationship to nature. So that finds its way in my, in my writings as well. So a lot of things coming from animals and mythology and uh, all that uh, play going back to, to Mother Earth. So that's the latest. Oh, it's so exciting, Lana. I would live, like to live for like five minutes in your brain. Yes, come. Come, can I come in? 
Yeah. I'd love that. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. You said like, like 20 things. I was like, wow. Like, wow. wow. <laughs> who else? Who else wants to share what you're working on? Um, I have an, an album, Sifr, that I released last year, but because of the pandemic, I'm just continuing to release it. I have yet to perform it live, so you can find it on all the things, all the platforms and um, my website. But please listen to it and share it with someone if you like it. Yes, yes, yes. Just tell us the name of the album once more, name. Uh, Sifr, S-I-P-H-R, Sifr, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I would say like I did nothing for about 10 months. I, you know, have a three and a half year old. And so, so you're doing a lot of things. A actually. lot of things. <laughs> yeah. You're doing a lot of things. So let's just be clear. A lot of dancing and singing and baking and crafts. Um, um, but I, I got to do a, a podcast with Word for Word of Books and Roses of story by Helen Oyeyemi, which is available. Um, it's a beautiful story. It's a really, really lovely story. Um, and then um, I am uh, got to contribute to Brava's international or Brava, Canta Brava, um, and got to read a Naomi Shihab Nye play for that. And Nora did my uh, Arabic pronunciation and tra translation is what I really needed. Cause I, I had audio of Naomi um, reading her poem, but I was like, I don't really know what, what this means. So and Nora did that. Um, and then, yeah, I get working on getting Zane into a, a daycare so that I can do more work but I I just I I like I was amazed by people who were prolific during the quarantine but I just like kind of my brain my artistic brain shut down for for a long time I was just kind of like um in you know survival mode so it's three and a half is a, yeah. is a yeah but three and a half is a very important zone of childhood which I remember very well with my wonderful mm -hmm. son but there's a lot of growth happening in those brains and bodies yeah <laughs> bandwidth bandwidth becomes slightly diminished <laughs> anyone else sharing that if you've published the novel now what are you working on now oh it was so uh, you know i was so relieved that uh after January, I couldn't write in line. Sometimes they asked me for a very easy article and even that I can't write. It was too dense, too intense. And now, um, uh, well, I sing. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I take my singing lessons again. I sing very bad, but anyway, I want to be a singer now. I want to know, <laughs> have a new life. <laughs> No, I don't know. I have a project, but it's very difficult for me because all the theater, theater projects are canceled. So I, ha I have to write another book. I have an idea. My publisher accepted this, but uh, I am afraid for the moment. I want to be, uh, I want to sing. <laughs> That's and it's very interesting because my singing uh, coach said to me, when you because we were uh, working on Turkish repertoire, and she told me, oh, all these Turkish notes, you are singing it so sadly, please uh, work on something else. And now we're working on uh, standards of uh, American standards, jazz, jazz standards. So it's very swinging and it's very joyful. I'm singing very badly and I'm so happy to sing all these things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to hear that because, you know, it's, 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 people have rendered that they don't believe they're allowed to sing, you know, if they're, not, you know, if they're, if they're not performing, they don't have performance voice. And that's not what singing used to be. My voice teacher used to say this. She's like, everybody used to sing. It was something we all did, like going to the bathroom, eating, and we've sequestered it to like people who, and it's, an incredibly important aspect of our of our joy actually right you know this name i mean i was just i was a singer growing up actually more than an actor and um i miss singing a lot but i i know how i feel when i do it huh? 
And I'm sure it touches a zone in the brain which makes you happy to sing. I'm sure of this. <laughs> it does, it does, it does. And it's, you know, and yeah, if you have periods of sadness, it's harder to sing. Mm. Yeah, birds don't sing when they feel it. But I don't know if you've heard this. Is, I mean, now during the pandemic, birds are so incredibly yeah. vocal. It's absolutely amazing. My son's doing this whole bird watching portion for school right now. And it's just, I'm hearing things I never heard before. My awareness is so much more peaked. Um, anyone else want to share anything they're working on or excited about? Ideas? Taranj, are you writing at all, Taranj? Uh, I'm directing the Trojan Women at UC Berkeley's theater department. Um, we're producing it as an audio play. So I wish my musical skills were stronger, but uh, I'm working with the cast to sort of develop, like speci especially the chorus, to develop um, some kind of sound vocabulary that they can, I don't know, hum or sing throughout the play. Um, so that's been kind of interesting, trying to find that. How are you playing with that? I mean, is it something you're just coming up with as a group or? Um, well, the, the chorus has like the students that are in the chorus, four out of five have singing experience. So they're contributing a lot and they're proposing uh, a lot of ideas. So it's a matter of just trying them and choosing what works. Okay. That's yeah. exciting. That's exciting. I love that play. I love that play. Oh my gosh, what a joy. Okay, we only have a few minutes, but I'm thinking of something myself. This whole concept of this year's theme being choose to challenge. If you had to uh, vocalize, well, actually, I'm going to make you vocalize now. What do you choose to challenge in relationship to Women's Day? What do you choose to challenge? Uh, and I will go in the same order we started. Does that make sense? So I'm going to say I choose to challenge dominant, dominant narratives as an artist, especially art, uh, narratives around female, the female experience. Conti I continue to choose to challenge that. That's what I'm going to say. That's my pledge for 2021. Um, and Sara, I'm going to make you go first. We'll go yeah. Uh, you know, the, the pandemic and it, through its multiple stages and now for us, at least at work, uh, tomorrow's our one year anniversary of shelter in place. Um, I think a lot of people are reflecting about this time last year. Uh, initially, yeah, it gave me so much pause because I'm such a social person. So full, the calendar is always so full. And uh, that pause allowed me to hear birds, but it also suddenly scared me. And I found myself going to yoga more than I ever have before. And trying to sit with some of the stillness so that it breaks some of the patterns uh, from before. I hope I can do that. Uh, I have found that the more I'm practicing, the more I realize how unnerving it is and how the noise and the uh, excitement and the people that I miss very, very much was also limiting some reflection. Uh, so whether it's at this time in life or uh, this quarantine, I challenge my own belief of, about who I am uh, mm -hmm. and I'm looking to see what this, uh, what after uh, this quarantine unveils, whether I fall right back to old patterns or have this opportunity to break something. No, oh, thank you, Sara. Thank you. Lana. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit similar in that um, I choose to challenge um, the beliefs or misconceptions or realities that I have come to believe and that hinder me and stop me from showing my light and uh, living fully. Because I, I do think that we are our biggest enemies. Um, and uh, I've just just kind of, you know, be, be, and, 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 and as crazy and as wild and as nuts that and just challenge, challenge that. Yeah. 
Oh, love it. Knock, knocking really hard. Naima. I love all of these. Um, and I guess um, I will also challenge, um, I think the the fact the challenge the notion that my worth is based on what I produce and the way in which I produce it and how I present myself that is uh, seemed as valid to the dominant so I'm going to challenge that by actually sitting with my being in the stillness I really resonate what you said Sada and from that place of unknowing what unrestrained art could come from that but not challenge that art has to come from this production um, place in this hetero capital, you know, patriarchy, racist system, period. (laughs) (laughs) Sophia. Oh, um, this is a super interesting and a kind of scary question to me, but I think I'm going to choose to challenge the limitations that I put on myself and my expectations of myself as a 44 year old woman who's like five three parent biracial like I I I want to not feel limited by each of those things that I can sometimes be like oh well uh like that's a good thing to work towards <laughs> integration you. integration yeah fed up uh, I was thinking maybe fear. I like the title of Fassbinder's movie, which is Fear, It's the Soul. And uh, I think that uh, sometimes, yeah, these all these fear, a little bit like all of you, you know, I am my worst enemy and I'm limiting myself and maybe I'm plenty of fears and Fear is the soul, so I want to challenge the fear, I think, in a general sense. Of course, okay. fear of the totalitarianism, fear of the populisms, and also my fear of myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, the m- micro macro. Yes. Oh, you people. <laughs> Okay. Challenge because with the, that fear, definitely, and the fear of the other, to challenge the fear of the other who is different and who makes different choices right now, especially in a world that's making us really like with or against everything, and um, challenge the separation that 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 is 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 between us as human beings. Challenge that. Also. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you all. So much for your, for not only your time but your um, uh, yeah, you're just your layered, forthright, open-hearted natures. Thank you so much. This was very, very enriching, and a really wonderful experience for me personally. So thank you. I want to say happy, happy International Women's Day to everyone who's been with us or who will have the chance. Um, yeah, thank you so much.